Hello, class. Let's start our lecture twenty nine. We will talk about correlations. I'm your instructor, Miss Luanlo. We are moving forward to week eleven. Ah,、uh, so we only have actually we only have three more week lecture. We will go over in week fourteen. We will have some two case study and talk about the case study. Then the week fifteen, you will do the. On the project three, so we only have three more weeks for the lecture. In week eleven, ah,、uh, we will talk about correlations. So then we will talk about the linear regression and least square. In today's lecture, we will talk about how to measure the linear association. The first thing we will talk about the prediction. Then we will introduce correlation coefficient. In the next two lecture in week. Eleven. We will predict the regression line, and what is the best linear predictor. So that we'll talk about the math, the method of the least square. So that's start the lecture twenty nine. The first thing we want to talk about prediction. Of course, when we talk about the data science, we want to figure out according to the data we observe what kind of information we can get. And also, one important thing is we want to based on our data, our information we can collect to pre predict the future. So that's why the prediction to be simple. That's guessing the future based on incomplete information, because when we do the samples, ah,、uh, sampling when we collect our data, we do have some information we need, but sometimes those information may not be complete. So we need to guess, think, guessing the future just based on the incomplete information. So what is prediction, right? So for example, we can we have a newborn baby. Ah,、uh, for example, my second grand nephew ah、uh, just born. He he is ah、uh, eight months now. So we want to see how tall he will be, right? So that's why we will see how is my niece and my nephew in law their height. But still, you don't have enough information. So what we can do is, if I can collect more people's height, so then knowing their children's height, maybe we can do a better prediction for a child how how tall they will be. So that's why one way of making the prediction is we try to predict an outcome for an individual. So for my example, I want to know how is my Second grand nephew, he how tall he will be, or even my first grand nephew, how tall they will be. So in order to get the outcome, how tall they will be, we need to find others who are like this individual. So that's why a lot of time when you have a newborn baby in the family, we will talk about our other family members' height. Then we kind of think about how tall they will be, but this data may be not enough. Uh, so maybe you can just find the people, all the people's height in your neighborhood, not only just your family. So the neighbors, or the community, or in the whole city, all people, the adults, their height and their children's height. So then we find others who are like the individual, and the outcome, you know. So of course we find the similar individual. We also get their height information. So use those outcome are the basics of your prediction. So that's prediction. We using the existing information to try to predict the outcome for the individual. So this one actually we already did in lecture ten. So that we go back to see our、um, sample Jupyter notebook. Okay, so if we open our lecture twenty nine file, okay, so here, ah,、uh, that's back to our this example, this CSV file we already introduced, ah,、uh, that's in lecture ten, ah,、uh, hope you still remember about that, ah,、uh, so remember we have the data file for the family heights, we have the different families, so total we have, um, not sure how many family we can see the last row. But total, we have about nine thirty four people. So in each family, we have the dad's height, the mom's height, and the child's height. 
So of course, remember this child is not child. We just say they are child, but those child they already grew up. Uh, so that's their grow, their uh, adult height. So then the children here is the total children in that family and the older and uh, the sex about the children. Okay, so if you remember, we have this data, right? So at that time, when we try to do some analyze the data and to do some prediction, uh, we try to find the parents' average. So we just using the father's height and mother's height add together divide by two. So then we create another table. So this table only contain parents' average and the child height. So from here, in this information, in order to see their relationship, we make the scatter plot. Okay, so that's you can see this scatter plot. So on the x-axis is parents' average height. The y-axis is children. So they kind of has their association. Because you can see if the parents' height is taller, right? So actually their children's height intended. Uh, they have more um, location, more that is actually in, at the higher location. So if the parents' height is shorter, uh, so then you can see that all the parents are shorter on the dot. But we still can see they have more dots uh, on the um, left side. So that's why you can see they do have more um, parents if their height is shorter. So the children's height will be shorter as well. So actually, if we want to see all the data in a whole, that's actually of too much information. So we try to simplify our prediction and analyze. So that's why we only focus on the parent's average height is 68 inch. Uh, so that's about six, uh, 5 feet and 8, eight inch. So we just according to this 68 average. So in this average, actually we are including plus minus half inch. So that's why here we plot uh, the true red line. So this red line, we just include the parents average height is 68. So now we are kind of give them the range as well. So that's why we don't want to just align. And uh, we give them the range. So that's uh, like 67.5 to 68.5. So from here, then we can see we have less information, right? We have less uh, data. But in this data, right, for the parents' average height is 68. They do have children as short as only 5 feet. But they do have the children as tall as almost like 78, 79 inch. So that more than 6 feet. So, so many different information. So, the easier way, we just try to find the average. So, that's why we get the, the parent's average. If the parent's average is between 67 and 67.5 and 68.5, that's fine. That location only. Then we find the average for the children. Okay, so from there, we call the nearby table. So then we just get the column for the children height. So then we find the average. Then we got the 67.62. Um, so that's why here we have the new scatter plot. Okay. So you have your parents height is around 68. So then we get the children. We're just using the average to represent all the children. Okay. So then here we got one example for the parents' average height. So actually we can apply to all the different parents' average height. So that's why I remember in lecture 10, we write a function. Okay, so this function is, you tell me the parents' average height. So then we get that uh, range. So then we return you the average from that range, the children's height. So that's why we have this function. So once we have this function, we can apply that on all the parents' average. Okay. So that's why here we have this new table is the height with the prediction. 
So this prediction is what? We're using the prediction according to the parent's average. So then we call this function return the average for the children height. Okay. So I got the error because I didn't run this function yet. So let me run this function again. So then we can get on the new table. So this table you will have parents average, of course. Then we get the prediction for the on the children's average. So then if we put this scatter plot again, okay, so you can see here that's all the dots represent our observed data. So then the yellow dot is the prediction data we get. So this prediction data according to the parents average. So then we have our children's prediction. So you can see from here, it did look like a straight line, right? So our children prediction actually is a straight line here. So we kind of have to see that's kind of its association um, between the parents' height and the children' prediction height. And we do see that's a straight line. But the most important thing is we still don't know this straight line. What is the slope? Okay, so we really want is we have this straight line. Can we number, we give them the number, we give them an equation to draw this straight line. So that's what we will do for this week. Okay, so please make sure on your honest, remember, um, so here we run again for this example. Make sure you refresh your memory about this example we did in lecture 10. So from this example, right, we will talk about more. That's we will see the prediction. We really find the prediction and we find the straight line the equation for that chart prediction. Um, post the video anytime so you, if you need to run your file. Okay, so back to our lecture file. So that's why the earlier example we showed you, you see you have two numeric numbers. So we try to find the prediction. Actually, they are showing the association. So the association we have is we focus on two numeric variables. So when we draw their scatter plot, so sometimes they have the trend, right? They have positive association. That means the slope is positive. When the one numeric variable get the value go, going high, the other one will going high as well. So they have the positive association. But sometimes that trend is negative association. That means the slope is negative. So that means when one value going up, the other value will going down. So sometimes, most of the time, we see that's the trend. But also sometimes we see the two numeric variable. They do have a relationship shape in the scatter. But this scatter, this kind of shape, they may be linear. Like earlier, we see that will be straight line. So if that's straight line, of course, we have positive association, we have negative association. Then we try to find the equation of the linear. But sometimes they may have the distinguishable shape, but they are not linear. They maybe have some curves. So maybe their pattern is from specific region, they have on the curve in one equation. Then in some specific range, they have different kind of the shape, the curve in the other relationship. So that's no matter what, they are not straight line, we call that nonlinear. So no matter they are linear or nonlinear, the association between our numeric variable if they have pattern, we try to, we want to describe that. So that's why whenever you have the data, we want to have the scatter plot first. Then according to the scatter plot, we find their association. So that's why we say you have two numeric variables. The first thing, try to visualize that. From that scatter plot, we see what their relationship. 
then we try to quantify that. So that we will do for this lecture. When we do the prediction, we see the variable if they have the association. If they have the association, what are the pattern for that two numeric variable? If they are a linear or a nonlinear relationship, then we if they have the straight line, then we try to find the equation for that straight line. That we try to quantify that. So in the next video, we will see more demo in our lecture five.